What's going on, guys? Today we're going to have a very interesting conversation because there's something that I've been talking about on this channel for almost a decade and a half, and there are many people who push back to it. The Lynette Atkins, the Timothy Wards, there are many, many people who want an easier pathway to life. The American dream is not cheap, but we have a lot of people who are looking for a sale on the American dream. And this is one of the things and that I conscientiously look at. I grew up the product of a single mother. I grew up in a house that didn't have running water when I was born. We didn't get running water in the house, the bathroom and stuff until I was about 10. So I was one of these people who grew up, who have a background of being extremely poor in one regard and extremely rich in another regard. Let's talk about me being extremely rich. Even though from a financial standpoint we were poor, I had a stay-at-home mother and I was raised very upper middle class. I never went to daycare or or any of that other stuff. There was always someone that I knew to care and look after me. But let's go ahead and talk about the American dream. There's a lot of people who feel the American dream is over. That the average person cannot afford the American dream. Now, is the American dream over? Nope, it's alive and well. Now. The, the other point, can the average person afford the American dream? And I also agree with that. No, the average person cannot afford the American dream. Right now, the average sale price of a house, I think, is four hundred and twenty to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And if you're making forty thousand dollars a year, single person income, or if you're married and your wife makes forty and you make eighty, guess what? Um you cannot afford that house. Even if you have down payment and good credit, your income's not enough to afford that house. So this kind of takes us into a different spot. Is America becoming a safe haven for the wealthy? That's something we got to ask ourselves because here's the thing. There's, you know, I've done this research. I've done this research where I went to the internet and I pulled down a lot of jobs and stuff. And this is my hypothesis that 75 to 80% of America makes less than $40,000 per year, which if you're in Spokane, Washington, or Kansas, or Iowa, $40,000 can be, be enough to live quite significantly. But if you're in Atlanta, Miami, New York, Los Angeles, Austin, Texas, you're struggling at 40,000. You're struggling quite a bit. And this is the thing that I want to say. The American dream is not cheap. The American dream is not for sale. The American dream is on the shelf for anyone who chooses to work up to it. And this is the point right now. Right now, there's crazy, crazy conversations going on about chat GPT and how this powerful, powerful online software can make doing all of these things easy. That's the big selling point of chat GPT, that you can build a blog easy. You can write emails easy. You can do all these things easy. And that's what I understand that a lot of people in America are looking for. They're looking for an easier pathway. They don't want to work like right now. Uh, I got a video that's coming out about remote work. Um, these people want comfort, access, the attributes of the wealthy without the wealth, without doing the work of the wealthy. Um, it, it, it's really, really interesting how people think. But let me go ahead and give you my opinion of the American dream. If you're willing to work for it, the American dream is possible for anyone that's willing to work for it. Now, let's get into what 
does working for the American dream mean? Number one, you're going to get as much education as you can, informally or formally or a combination of both. The people with the most education make the most money. You're going to aim, once again, for a six-figure income. Let's put a number on that. $120,000. you are going to aim for $120,000 a year. So you're going to work up, get your education. You're going to stay out of the foolish people networks. And you're going to work on yourself and you're going to do the things that you need where you can make $120,000 a year single person income. And what you want to do, and I'm going to say some stuff that may sound a little aggressive, but honestly, I see it this way, that if you're a man, you need to go ahead and get yourself set up financially before you get married. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that, like we could struggle together. I do not believe in the struggle together story. Uh, I think the struggle with Gary's story is really rif- rife with a lot of foolishness, a lot of cheating, a lot of low expectations. So I'm going to say this. If you are a man, you want to get to your $120,000 income before you get married, before you have children. Now, why do I say this? What are we talking about? We're talking about the American dream. One of the things that kills the American dream is having children out of wedlock and having children too early. Kills it because now you are a parent. You got to take whatever job you can get because you got to put some food on the table for little baby Joe. You got to go get some shoes for little baby Joe. You got to make sure baby Joe can go to kindergarten. So your life is literally snatched out of your hands and put in the hands of baby Joe. So that's one of the things that keeps so many people from achieving the American dream is having kids or what I believe is reckless childbirth, having one, two, three, four, five or six kids by multiple baby fathers. It's just a recipe for disaster. So. That's one of the things you would work hard, get all the education you can. You would do this and you would get to your number 120 before you get married, before you have children. And then you would continue to raise your number because that that 120 is your first stage. Ideally, you want to get to 250,000. I know a lot of people just tune me out because it's like $250,000. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. How can I get there? Good question. I'm going to tell you, number one, there are a number of jobs where you can make $250,000 a year, but you got to have a high education level. I I see these articles talking about how to get a six figure job without a college degree. Now, there are six figure jobs without college degrees, plumbing, electrician, construction work. But here's the thing. You ever see someone who does construction? You ever notice that when you're driving and you see these workers working on buildings, doing constructions, you notice you don't see no overweight fat dudes. You might see someone with a little belly, but that's about it. Because these guys are walking and working and they're out to the elements and they're exposed. So typically, if you want to be an electrician, you want to be a plumber, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to work in unpleasant conditions. You're going to have to work. And that's where the I don't have any education, but I want a six figure job stuff. That's where the discussion gets lost, because if you wanted to dedicate yourself to trucking, if you got in the proper lanes, that's a six figure job. But once again, you're not going to be home every night. You may be on the road for two to four to six weeks out there driving that truck. So here's the problem. America wants easy. Going back to chat GPT, mid journey. They want something easy. They want something hot. They want something fast. They don't want to spend a lot of time at a computer. They don't want to spend a lot of time learning. They don't want to spend a lot of time self-education. And the barrier of America reflects the consciousness of America. Because like I said, Anyone can have the American dream if they want it. 
if they want it, if they want it, if they want to work up to it. Um, there are many people who have gone ahead and did fire. What is fire? Financial independence, retire early. And one of the biggest things I see a lot of these people who do fire is they move out the country or they move to a cheaper zip code. Now, I'm about to say something that may sound aggressive and may even be offensive. I don't feel that moving to moving down in life is an option. Let me tell you what my plans are. My plans are to be 77 years old, driving a Porsche, living in a million dollar house. Those are my plans. My plans is not to downgrade. My plans is not to dis dissuade. My plans are not to move to the left. My plans are to continue to do things, to build wealth. And that's my plan. My plan is to be an old dude in a Porsche with a hot, hot, hot girlfriend. That's my plan. And if I continue to work, I continue to do the things I'm doing, guess what? My plan is going to become reality. So I have no plans of moving to a foreign country. No plans whatsoever. Uh, I may visit some foreign countries. I may do that. But I have no plans of uprooting and moving to a cheap uh, location. Because here's the thing. Uh, and this is a decision that I made. I am not going to probably ever retire. Now, what does retirement mean? In the sense that when I say retire, many of you are thinking you leave your job. You have a pension or social security or a pension and social security coming in. You're at your house. You don't have to work to get money and you do what you want. Um, that's not what I mean by retirement, because once again, doing what I do, I feel that I am partially retired already. You know, right now, the next from May to December, I'm going to be working quite a bit. But after December, I go back to my retirement life. Um, since I've been on YouTube, I've had many ventures, many times where I was working 10, 15 hours a week and doing whatever I wanted to do. So that's been going on for years. So I don't have the desire to run to retirement. I don't have the desire to run to another country. I don't have the desire to because I've been able to live a really good lifestyle here in America and I'm working part time. I've been able to live in the top 1% neighborhood in Atlanta, zip code 30327, and I wasn't working full time. So part of me and my thought process is generated from the fact that I am not working full time. Now, from now to December, I will be working full time. But see, there, there's that's something called a corporate sprint. What I'm doing, I'm doing a corporate sprint. So I've had the ability to sit down in the middle of the day and watch a Netflix movie or just chill. And my money still comes in. So I don't have this burning desire, this thirst to quit my job and run over here because and also. Uh, I've never, other than the time I was in the boarding house, I had a bunch of crappy jobs, bunch of crappy jobs. But since I've become to corporate America, I did not have a job that I hated. I had some jobs I didn't, I wasn't 100% fond of, but actually where I got in my car, I gripped my steering wheel and I grunted and I was like, I don't wanna go here. I don't. I've never had one of those kind of jobs. And also, since the great, the beginning of the great transition of Glendon Cameron, I have been on an upward arc since 1999. Every year from since 1999 up until now, every year has gotten better. And I'm going to explain to you why. Remember the first thing I said, get all the education that you can get. I've always been in a state of learning. I've always been in a state of absorbing. I've always been in a state of learning, but more importantly, learning and applying. I just don't learn. I apply what I learn pretty quickly. Like I read a book or watch a video. I might be applying that stuff that day. 
And that's the difference. There's a lot of people out there who are really uh, about every article, every book, every website, every video about this subject matter, and they never actually apply the knowledge. So on one side, their brain is getting very dense because they're stuffing all this information in there. But on the other side, ain't nothing happening because they ain't doing nothing. So as I said before, anyone can have the American dream if they want to do the work for it. Once again, that's where a lot of people um, separate because a lot of people uh, just don't want to do the work. And if you live in America, I will say that you can have above average lifestyle without doing the work because the way our system is set up. If you live in the United States of America and you're poor, make $25,000 a year or less, and you live in the, you live in the hood, guess what? You're richer than 85% of the rest of the world. Right now, you got people in Africa who are looking for clean drinking water. You got people in India who use the bathroom in the middle of the streets. This is going on right now. So if you're an American citizen, even if you're poor and struggling, you have a car, you have a television, you, you, you have certain things. You may not have the best of the best, but you got certain things, right? And to compare it to this little girl who's squatting in India because she's taking the dump in the streets, or this little kid in Africa, I remember, I used to date this girl who was from uh, Cameroon. It's a country in Africa. And I remember we went to dinner one night and we were just talking. And this girl actually told me she did not have her first pair of shoes until she was nine years old. I want you to think about that. That that just that stuck with me. It's like I've not had my first pair of shoes until I was nine years old. We don't have that kind of poor in America unless you're living up in the hills away from a, even a rural community. You're just out there in the hills, living in a tent, living that just, I, once again, I mean, because when she told me that, I felt that. It's like, I didn't have my first pair of shoes until I was nine years old. So we don't have that level of poverty in America because of the social networks, of the churches, of the donations and stuff. So you can have a pretty good life without working up to middle class and working once again up. I'm going to say it. the American dream ain't cheap. The American dream is not for sale. The American dream is very expensive and you can choose to purchase the American dream or you can choose to not purchase the American dream. You could choose to go to another country where it's cheaper. You could choose to not work as hard. You can choose not to get a girlfriend. You could choose not to have a family because it's cheaper just taking care of you. I'm not hating. I'm just stating. It's cheaper. And once again, the American dream is for anyone who wants it. And this is one of the things I noticed years and years ago when I started gaining access to the apparel market. The American, the apparel market is a place where business owners can go buy stuff wholesale. And I remember the first time I was in there, I noticed that a lot of the merchants in the apparel mart were immigrants. And this is something I've seen time and time again. You could take this kid from Nigeria and you put him in the United States of America. He's going to go to the best college. He's going to get the most education. He's going to have a higher income than the average American. You could take the best kid from China, Korea, and put them over here. They're going to start a restaurant. They're going to start a business. And it's like immigrants intimately know to make it here that you need to get the most education possible or you need to start a business. And this is one of the things because I've noticed that how to start business content on YouTube is not doing well because a lot of people are not really looking for how to start a business content or basic general outlines. They're not looking for that. They're looking for something that they can do is simple, elegant, fast, doesn't take a lot of time and pays a lot. I really saw this YouTube commercial that was talking about remote closers make more money than most CEOs. And this is one of the things. 
let's say you're a remote closer, right? And let's say you make $4,000 a day, which is like a million four a year. And at the end of the year, guess how much you're gonna pay in taxes? You're gonna pay 400K, which means that you're not a millionaire. You would literally have to keep the majority of the money that you made for two years to actually have a million dollar net worth. And the thing is, if you're making 4K a day, I guarantee you, you spending some money. You're enjoying your American dream. But one of the things is, I just see this over and over again, that people are looking for simple, easy solutions to complex problems. And I'm not saying you guys are dumb. You're, you're far from dumb. You have the intellect and the emotional availability to do what you need to do. But the simple fact is a lot of people just don't want to do it. Don't want to put the effort, don't want to put the time in. They just don't want to do it. So once again, the American dream is not for sale unless you're an immigrant because they have to spend money to come here. So in many regards, if you're a native born American where you're here, you got your rights, you got your papers, you got your social security number, The American dream isn't for sale for you, but for immigrants, the American dream is very much for sale. It's very much for sale. But I see a lot of stuff of people leaving the country to move to these places. And I wonder what it would be like. I remember I spent six months in Japan when I was in the military. And that was kind of like living in a foreign country. And At that time, I was so young and my mind was just wide open. I could have eventually lived there because I was who I was back then. Now I can visit Japan, but like moving and living in Japan, I would not do it. Uh, I also thought about moving to London. You talk about real estate prices being steep. You got Rolls Royces and Ferraris parked on the street because having a house with a garage If you have a house with a garage in London, you're living either way out or you're living really, really rich. And I'm talking about a three, four, five, six, seven, eight million dollar house. One of the things that I I did think about, I did, like I said, I seriously considered moving to London. And then I went to visit London. And recently, because you know, there was a time I visited London when I was younger. And then I went to visit London again And I was like, I don't want to live here because see part of this whole experience is you need to go there and visit to see if you can dig that culture. And I was just like, I don't want to live here. I don't know. I'll visit, but I'm not going to live here. So for me, Glendon Cameron, I will be in America. And as I go through this thing, I'm just looking at a lot of different possibilities And I keep coming back to similar thought processes in a similar position. I'm pretty much going to stay here in the United States of America. And I do have some very interesting training that's going to come up for my corporate people. It's going to be really, really interesting. But, you know, just to say that the American dream is not for sale. The American dream is not cheap. But anyone who wants to work up to it can have the American dream. It's a choice. It's simply a matter of choice. And if you don't want to make that choice, that's fine. If you want to go move to Mexico, you want to move to Colombia, you want to move to one of these other countries, that's your option. That's your that's that's something that's open to you. But for me and folks who think like me, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not moving to another country. And. I will go ahead and pay the price in full for the American dream. To me, it's quite cheap. It's quite cheap. But that's how I'm thinking. That's how I see it. So let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section. It's May and we're into paid courses. Let me go ahead and give you the breakdown. Last month, I did the money course, which was free. Links below. Go ahead and get that. And then in May, I'm doing the first paid course and you know, the course is going better than I expected. It's going much better than I expected because essentially 
getting into productivity, getting on how to get things done is part of a long-term process of being successful. And essentially what I'm doing is money course, get your money together, the productivity course, how to do things. And then next month, or probably toward the end of this month, it just depends on when I finish up the productivity course, we're gonna get into some very different and engaging things. We're gonna get into some very, very different stuff. So what I would advise you to do is go ahead, get the money course, go below and get into the productivity course because this is what I'm gonna do. Everyone that signs up for the productivity course is going to get a bigger discount than the people who don't sign up for the productivity course for the next course. And this is one of the things that I'm gonna work on. This is one of the things I'm gonna build. This is one of the things that we're getting ready to do and we're getting ready to get this puppy set up because I wanna create a lot of corporate citizens. This is a person who's making $250,000 a year from a collection of businesses or one business. And this puts this person in the position to get wealthy because $250,000 a year is not wealthy. That makes you rich because you can drive what you want, you can live where you want, you can send your kids to private school. And it gives you enough money to put into proper investments for you to be wealthy in the future. So if you want to be part of this organization, of this gang, the nerd gang, just go ahead below, get the money course and get the productivity course because this is something I'm doing very differently. Um, I'm going to do one course at a time and I'm going to work on it. I'm going to get it finished and then I'm going to move on to the next course. So this is going to give you ample time to get in on that early student discount because we have a lot of things that are coming this year. So go ahead and get into it and I will see you guys in the next one. This should be fun. I'm really interested in seeing what the comments are going to be on this video.